and Valvoline motor oil. June 21st is the first official day of summer in 1997. At the midway point of the PPG Card World Series, no one has shone quite like the two Canadians in the championship. Paul Tracy, winner of three straight races and championship points leader, and his countryman who has won the last two races, Greg Moore. This weekend, the Canadians are hoping to maintain their winning record at Portland International Raceway. Eurosports coverage of qualifying for the G.I. Joe's 200 from Portland, Oregon. Ben Edwards and Jeremy Shaw with you here. And it's a rather wet and rainy day for the second day of qualifying. Jeremy, we saw a good day's qualifying on Friday, but the weather conditions today have not been ideal so far. No, indeed. Showers this morning and uh, earlier on this afternoon as well. The track, though, is drying out pretty quickly, isn't it, Ben? There's, a, there's not much of a, a wind here, but there's a slight breeze, and it is reasonably warm. round was the quickest lap so far in this session but there he is uh, going through the, uh, the, the curving back straight away I guess the, the NASCAR guys call that the banana it's a long curving right hand uh, section there and then into the turn 7 8 chicane section and uh, here's Scott Pruitt who, who is quickest from yesterday yes uh, Scott Pruitt was the fastest man in that dry qualifying session yesterday he did a time of 59.5 let's hear from him butterflies stirring around inside Scott Pruitt because you remember what happened at Belle Isle he had the provisional pole in the last event and then Gilles Deferrin stole it from him in the final session on Saturday today it looked like the odds are more in your favor but this racetrack is quickly drying out it, it is and it looks like the uh, the sun will actually come peeking through here in a minute we're I think we're in pretty good shape regardless um, you know we ran good yesterday we had more to give it uh, we just didn't get a clear lap going as, as well as we'd like yesterday so you know regardless what happens I think we're in pretty good shape if it stays if it stays a little damp that won't bother me though now is, what's the plan right now will you just wait and see if anybody comes close and starts to flirt with your number we'll hold tight uh, we'll probably wait until anybody gets to the bottom of the probably the 61s uh, high 60s before you go out because that'll just be another car to go out and dry the track and what looks like is going to be a familiar theme this weekend decision time will it be these tires that you run in the dry with no tread or will it be these tires that you run in the rain or will you end up having to use both somehow before the weekend is over it's always interesting in portland let's go to marty reed well thanks gary and the surprise of yesterday's qualifying and i'm sure you will take no offense to that because dario franchiti your first time at portland you're 28 hundredths of a second off of pole and you're on the outside of row number one you got to be smiling yeah, we were very happy. You know, we worked pretty hard yesterday. It's the first time at the, the Portland track, but the guys at Hogan Racing worked really, really hard. We came here with a pretty good setup. But um, I've, got to, I've got to thank Mercedes and Firestone and especially Reynard for giving us a lot of help to, to get the setup and to move. Yeah, great. I mean, we, uh, it was quite easy circuit to learn, but I think it's, it's quite a, a difficult circuit. But it's hard work. The question I have to ask you is, what are your strategy going into your session? You're going to follow these guys. They're drying it out for you. Will you try and better the time, or are you going to work on full tank setup? I'm not quite sure what we're going to do yet. A lot of it depends on the, the weather and whether it does completely dry out or not. But I think now is the time to start working on a race setup because it's a lot different driving a qualifying lap here than driving a, you know, a 200 mile race. Well, this is the guy who probably, probably, guys, will be on the outside of row number one. Frank Kitty, who put in that superb performance yesterday in qualifying. As you heard, their second fastest to Scott Pruitt, and if the conditions stay greasy and slippery for this second qualifying, Dario will indeed start from the outside of the front row. Tremendous, considering he hadn't been here before. He actually went for a walk around the track and ran the circuit when he turned up here on a Thursday. Then he went around in the golf cart, but that's a slightly slower proposition to going around in a 200-mile-an-hour Indy car. Yeah, I just saw his, his dad, George, a little while ago as well. He's, he and Dario both, they, they love this part of the world, the northwest here at the United States. It's a beautiful part of the world and George was saying he found a great Italian restaurant last night here in Portland so he was he was very happy. They're the times that were set from yesterday. As you can see Mark Blundell actually eighth fastest. He was fifth in the morning but dropped away a little bit in the qualifying. Look at ninth place. Christian Fittipaldi is back this weekend. Remember after suffering the broken leg in Australia earlier this season his place was taken by Roberto Moreno but Christian is back doing a fine job as well by putting in the ninth fastest time yesterday and Jeremy, this morning, Christian was one of the fastest guys out there in the wet. 
phenomenal. Right from the beginning of the session there on wet tyres, he was the quickest. And then uh, as soon as it began, the track began to dry, and he was one of the first people on to slick tyres, and again was able to, to maintain that pace, maintain his position at the top of the timing charts for a good way through the session. Fine effort, as you say, by Christian Filippaldi. Looks as though Alonso Jr. has gone straight on down the uh, escape road at the festival curves once again, the festival chicane. We've already seen this in the session. Alonso Jr. getting uh, the braking a little bit too late, locking up, going straight on down the escape road. Only qualified in 15th position yesterday. The three times winner here at Portland. Not really a lot he can do in this first session with uh, still on wet tyres. You can see the grooved tyres that he's still running on at the moment. And the pace that they're doing at the moment, the fastest car, Patrick Carpentier, who you saw just a few moments on screen in the Alimax car, and his time 69.7. So they're around 10 seconds off the dry weather time at the moment. That gives you an idea just how slippery it is out there. Yeah, interesting. That's, this is, as you say, the second time he's gone off in this session already. And uh, the track looks pretty much dry. I'm sort of surprised he's still on the wet tyres. Uh, but uh, it's, it's slippery down there, particularly under braking for the festival curves. There. It's down into a, a first or second gear through that first section of the corner there from maximum speed here, which is, even in these conditions, is probably a good 170 miles an hour or so. He's just coming onto the straight now, in fact, used as a drag strip also, this uh, part of the Portland International Raceway. But this track really is a very demanding circuit. As you heard Dario Franchitti say, and he was saying much more like many of the European tracks that he's been used to. Parker Johnston had a very bad day yesterday, though. He's a local man. Yes, and, and uh, let's hear from his team so leader. Team cool Green, Barry Green, team owner. Boy, a lot of gearbox problems yesterday. Now the rain throws the curveball to you. Yeah. What uh, What's in the mix right now, and what have you be able, been able to accomplish? Yeah, we, we were... Uh, we were cut short yesterday in qualifying. We just ran six laps. Uh, you know, the car's not too bad. Uh, not as fast as we want it, but uh, of course now the track's going to dry out just for the last one or two minutes of our session here. The sun's coming out now, so... Uh, but that's what you get. You know, we came here and had a problem with the gearbox. Anytime you sneeze in this series right now, you go right down the back, and that's where we are. You're 19th currently on the grid, and you admitted right just then that this may not be a, a chance for you to pick up. What happens, though, if this is a rain race because the, the, the new Firestone tire has not been tested yet in the rain? Well, I think, uh, you know, this morning uh, we ran in the wet with the, with the tire, and we were quite pleased with it. It was a bit hard to say. The, the conditions varied quite a lot through the session, but... Uh, you know, well, all I can say is uh, this is our first year with Firestone. We're very, very pleased with the tyre. We've had a great run with them so far, and uh, we're looking for a dry race tomorrow, so it'll be good for everyone. So it's those 300 fans that Parker Johnstone's had to round up tickets for, guys. All right. Thanks. Local man, then, good Parker Johnston. Uh, comes yeah, from yeah. Brush Prairie, Washington, not too far away, and as they said, he's brought quite a lot of fans along with him. Just uh, checking up on the qualifying rules as normal. Split into two groups on the road circuit here. They don't go out one by one, but into two groups. 30 minutes for each group, and the fastest time from either Friday or Saturday is what counts for the grid, like it used to be in Formula 1, but of course now Formula 1, they have just the one qualifying session. So the Friday times at the moment are what stand, but if it continues to dry out here, we could be in for some changes on the grid. Stay with us for qualifying from Poland. Their session, nobody managing to improve on their Friday time with the track being too damp and slippery, but a good performance nonetheless from Gualta Salas, who set the fastest time in those damp conditions with his one minute 3.770. And that was a little faster than Adrian Fernandez, who was second fastest in the session. PJ Jones also doing a good job as well. As he did yesterday, he was 18th fastest in the dry session. What we're doing now is just taking a little look back to what happened in Detroit. And Jeremy, of course, this final lap that happened in Detroit, what a disaster it was for the Pac West team when they tried to stretch their fuel mileage right through to the end on just one stop. We had Guderman leading, Mark Blundell in second place, Greg Moore hounding them in third position, and we were about to see the demise of the Pac West team. Starting off, of course, with Maurizio Guderman, who just slow down. Yeah, accelerating, accelerating out of turn seven there. The car just coughed and died, and it's incredible that the fuel pickup on these cars today is so good that uh, you get no warning it's about, it's about to die. It's just, it just cuts and dies, and it's used up the last of its fuel, and that is the end of that. Uh, a great gamble for by the Pac West team. We took a quick uh, glance there of Bruce McCaw on the timing stand. He is the team owner here. And there is Mark Blundell. He's coming out of turn 12. There are two corners to go. And here he is in the lead of the race, and he comes out of turn 13, gets on the throttle, 
and it's dead. There's nothing there. And watch out for Michael Andretti, who really had to do quite a bit of an avoidance act in the background to miss the back of Mark Blundell's car. But just so close to the flag, it was Greg Moore who came through to take the victory. Mark Blundell was out of the points in the end. Everybody storming past him. And what a disappointing end to the race it was for Blundell. Greg Moore, though, taking the win and moving up to third place in the championship. Moore is the man on the roll at the moment, having won at Milwaukee. Let's hear from Mark, though, about that Detroit race. The agony of two weeks ago at Belle Isle. How hard is it to get over something like that when you're just literally feet away from winning your first race? Uh, at the time, it was very difficult, but uh, now we're two weeks away from that event. We're at a new one, we're at Portland, and that's what I'm focused on. I'm on about going out and trying to do the same thing. Hopefully not run out of fuel, but hopefully win the race. And then you got guys like us coming up and reminding you about that. I'm sure that it's got to be tough to just put the whole experience behind you. Well, you know, I mean, it's a good thing that everybody's talking about it because, uh, you know, we, we feel strong, we feel that the team's improved, and we feel that the uh, results are going to come. So, you know, if it's still on people's minds, that's great. But, uh, you know, it's out of my mind now. I'm on to a, a new event, and I'm looking forward. You're qualified in the number eight spot for the moment. The track is drying. We've got some sunshine now. Do you think you're going to end up getting back in that race car and trying to improve on that slot or just wait it out? Well, I think we'll wait a little bit because the times from the previous session weren't that quick, but uh, it's definitely going to dry and it's definitely going to be there for us. All depends where we can get enough rubber down quickly enough to make sure that the times are going to be quicker than yesterday. Well, while Mark Blundell and his teammate had all of that ill fortune, there was certainly good fortune, good luck for another young man, and he's with Marty Reed right now. Good luck may be an understatement when you talk about Greg Moore, that great finish at Belle Isle. Uh, the smile still isn't off your face. Uh, have you still gotten over that one yet? Um, you never get over, you know, the, especially the first one in Milwaukee, you know, it's just a dream come true for me, but uh, Detroit was quite nice, you know, I was really, really happy about that one, it's just so, kind of like an early Christmas present, I guess, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's in the past, now we got to worry about where we are now. Uh, tenth on the grid as of uh, yesterday's session, and it doesn't look, everybody's saying, no, I can't go quicker, can't go quicker, can you go quicker? Uh, I think we can go a little bit quicker, it's, I mean, the, the sun's out, you know, we're just keeping our fingers crossed, the Pacific Northwest has been good to me before, so, uh, I'm looking forward to another good session today. Well, guys, the smile, it, it never goes away. It's been here since I first saw him on Thursday. Good luck this weekend. Thanks a lot. And it uh, looks like we may get the chance to hear from Chip Ganassi as well. We may not. We'll just have to wait and see. The team owner, of course, for Alex Zanardi and Jimmy Vassa. A decision to make. Your guys are supposed to be down in California later today running the International Race of Champions. How did you go about making that decision? Well, Bob, I mean, we, you know, this is our first and foremost uh, uh, responsibility is, is, is the kart race here at Portland. And uh, the guy said, look, we want to give it every possible shot we can to be at the front. And uh, thank God Mother Nature's helped us. The sun's come out a little bit. I think uh, maybe a half hour ago, it looked like there wasn't going to be much changing in the, in the positions. I think the, uh, the, the, the track is set now possibly for that to happen. I mean, we thank God for Mother Nature. Well, Chip, also, last year you had such a dominant year. Championship, a lot of wins, pole position, pole and a win here with Alex. This year it's been a lot tougher. I mean, you all have been, I wouldn't say struggling, by a lot of people's standards, you're still having a very successful year, but by last year's standards, you're struggling. By last year's standards, I'd say, yeah, we're not having the year that we did last year. However, I think if you look, we have uh, Alex and Jimmy both fourth and fifth in the points right now. I think a year ago at this event, I think Jimmy, I'm sorry, I think Alex only had about 17 points, and uh, now he's got 67, I think, or 69, and so we're, we're feeling pretty good about the rest of the year. We're just into that part of the year, Danny, where I think we can begin to do good, and, uh, you know, this is where it all started to turn around last year for Alex, and, uh, you know, Jimmy's just had some bad luck, and uh, we look for things out of him yet this season. First half of the season, Chip, was short ovals and temporary circuits. Now we're on to permanent road circuits and the big super speedways. Will that be a plus for you guys? I, I think so, Bob. I think uh, there's no question for years, I think our team uh, has not been as comfortable maybe at the short ovals that, that, that uh, maybe our, our, the Penske team and Newman Haas have, uh, have enjoyed there. Uh, I think uh, if you saw Greg Moore's uh, victory at Milwaukee, I think that was the first time a non- uh, Penske or Newman Haas team had won at Milwaukee since 1992, I think. So, you know, those guys really have something on those mile tracks that we don't have as a team yet. We do have some work to do there, no question. And uh, but boy, we're certainly glad those are over with and we're into this part of the season. Well, we're glad you were able to join us. Your men will be on the track shortly. Jimmy Vassar and Alex Zanardi will be out in the next... So they're coming up, as uh, Bob says, in the next group, and we should see if there will be any improvements from Friday's qualifying.
Dario Franchitti on circuit now, second fastest after the first qualifying session on Friday. And as this track begins to dry out, it's important he gets out there early, gets a feel for the circuit in case we see improvements in the latter part of this second qualifying session at Portland International Raceway. An absolutely tremendous effort as we spoke earlier from Dario Franchitti, never having seen this circuit before, hasn't had the opportunity to test before, so he's been learning it as we go. And uh, we've got a chance to speak to his team owner, Bob Varsha and Danny Sullivan of ESPN with Carl Hogan. Dario Franchitti out there at the moment and uh, currently on the outside of the front row after that effort in Friday's session. Nobody's really set a time so far in this faster group so we haven't got an idea yet of what the pace is. You can see the new tyres that he's on at the moment and uh, they're not really wearing in terribly quickly. It looks as though he's taking things fairly steady at this point but Franchitti building up towards uh, what could be in this session that sees improvements. Some fairly dangerous people quite close to him. Gilles de Ferran was third yesterday, Michael Andretti fourth, Jimmy Vassar was fifth, and Brian Herter in sixth position. And it's likely to be very, very close and competitive. There's Dara Franke, they're going through turn three on the, the far end of the track, the west end of the track. Sun's out over there where we are in front of the pits. Uh, we're still in, in shade here with some big black clouds around from one uh, wherever we look out of our windows here, but some sunshine around as well. So, you know, the track may well dry out and maybe we will get some representative times before the end of this half hour session. But It would be fun to see if we can get uh, a few challenges towards pole position. Remember, it's Scott Pruitt who's fastest so far on a 59.589. But as I say, so far the uh, fastest times we've seen today, some four seconds away from that with the tricky track conditions. Dario Franchitti, who's been getting better and better. Look at that sliding it coming out of the final corner. This is on the, uh, the drag strip. It really is a drag strip. The front straightaway coming across the start-finish line and down towards the first chicane. It flashes past us. Uh, yeah, well side was under acceleration. Just difficult to get the temperature in the tyres, I think, just yet. Get the tyres up to pressure properly and get the, any temperature into the rubber. Um, they're running the softer Firestone compound here, I think most of the Firestone teams are. But, uh, you know, the, the ambient temperature at the moment, I think, is probably only sort of 60 odd degrees and uh, not really anything like as warm as it was earlier on or, or yesterday, let's say, during qualifying. So Dario yet uh, sliding around there quite a bit before he's able to get that car really up to speed. So Frank Hitty, who's the last few races have really seen him improving. Detroit, of course, he had an opportunity to be in the top three there but they had that problem with the fuel hose which really dropped him out of the running you can see michael andretti he's sitting in the pit lane at the moment really quite relaxed uh, he's really waiting i should imagine to see this track dry up a little more before he puts in an effort fourth fastest so far in the swift for michael andretti who now lies in a close second place in the championship to paul tracy second on 86 points following a fine second place in Detroit. He was second in Milwaukee. It's about time Michael had another victory to back up the win, only win that he's had so far at the Homestead Oval, which started off the season. There's a good view of the chicane that they have to go through down at the end of start finish straight and then they come down into what is actually called turn one because the chicane inserted after the original track layout was made yeah the festival curves are very tight right left sequence there and then as you say the turn one retains whoa there is dario again under power getting the tail end of the car out there in turns three now into turn four and it's it's still pretty slippery isn't it it's, as you said, it's, the temperatures are not up to what they were yesterday, and the cars are definitely sliding around a great deal in the early stages of this session. On board with Bobby Rahal, but these positions at the moment are unchanged from first qualifying on Friday. It's Pruitt, Frankitti, to Ferran at the moment.
Greg Moore on circuit and getting it very sideways as well, but he's just put in a good time. He's done a, a 60.8, and remember, Greg was only 10th fastest yesterday on a 60.3. He's looking for an opportunity to move up the provisional grid at the moment, and Greg, who considers this his home track, as he told us in the interview yesterday, looks very fired up. Two wins in a row, and he'd love to make it a hat-trick of victories here at Portland International Raceway, a track he knows so well. He does indeed. He, 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 he's done a lot of racing here in go-karts, in Formula Ford, in Formula Ford 2000. And the track always treats him well. There he is, diving past Mari Michael Andretti there, excuse me, getting out of the way. He's on fresh tires. Greg Moore using all of the track there on the exit of turn nine onto the front straightaway. He flashes past us here across the line. That lap around for Greg Moore, 1 minute 01.742. So that, that sideways slide and having to jink his way around my, Michael Andretti just costing him about a second there. But both he and Dario Franchitti are down into the 60-second bracket, and those are far and away the fastest two cars so far this session. Greg is very fired up indeed and putting in a, a strong performance here early on in this last qualifying group. We've got some 21 and a half minutes still to go in this session. Oh, and he's lost it this time. Not a bad spin, and he goes through the mud on the inside on the grass, just uh, sort of decided to bail out. There was nothing to hit, so he didn't worry about going onto the grass on the inside, but he just suffered a bit of a, a case of chronic oversteer there, I think, Jeremy, and in the end, he couldn't quite hold it. Yeah, it's, uh, it, the track's obviously not far away, is it, from being, from, from, from being fast? Uh, and he was certainly on the limit there, it was Greg Moore. He's, he's made some improvements to the car he feels since yesterday, and uh, there he is trying to improve his time from yesterday, move up from 10th on the grid. Yeah, so a hard charge. But that is the problem that the drivers were talking about early in the session, that even if the track is dry, it is what they say green. It's been washed of all that rubber that was put down by the cars yesterday, and that actually means there could be less grip available. It's a fairly low grip surface anyway, and you're looking at the moment at the man who's got provisional pole position, Scott Pruitt, who is watching the timing monitors, I should think, very anxiously at the moment to see whether people are going quick enough to beat his time of 59.589 seconds. That's underneath the track record, actually, an impressive performance by Scott Pruitt. It was Jack Villeneuve who maintained the track record here from a 1995 qualifying time. But Pruitt well underneath that yesterday and uh, looking to hold on to what would be his second career pole position. It first came at Detroit last year. A couple of other cars are on circuit. Mark Blundell's just gone across the line. He's done a, a 64.0. As we take another look at, at what happened to Greg Moore. Just basically got on the power a bit too hard. The back end of the car sliding round. And then uh, he could have hit the brakes there and just stopped, but he decided to keep it going through the mud puddle on the inside. An indication of how much it's been raining today, because yesterday the grass was absolutely bone dry. Yes. Yeah, quite a bit of rain this morning. There's Greg now into the pits. I'll just take that car over and hope there's no damage to the front wings on that car. Meanwhile, Mauricio Gujamin fastest in this session. One minute... 0.474, and that is only, well, within three hundredths of his fastest time from yesterday. So great effort by Mauricio Guzman. He's, uh, he's on a streak here this season, but he's, he's been amongst the top ten, actually among the top eight in every single uh, grid this season. And yesterday, he was uh, rather disgruntled to find himself down in 12th place. He lost an engine, didn't he, in the first session. In the second session, he had a few sort of setup problems with the cars and tyre pressure problems as well. Didn't extract the maximum potential from that car. And certainly this afternoon, he's looking to go faster. And uh, he's hoping that we'll get some rubber down on the track for, during the session, and he will be able to move up into the top ten at best. Jimmy Vassar, fifth fastest after yesterday's qualifying session, now looking to improve on that. He's one of three drivers, Jeremy, who've got to disappear after this qualifying session because they're actually going to do another race down in California tonight. Yeah, the new California Speedway down in Southern California, Fontana, Roger Penske's new track down there. There's an international race of champions event, an IROC event, and uh, Jimmy Vassar actually led most of the last round at Charlotte uh, last month and he was only beaten towards the end the last few laps with a yellow and allowed the rest of them to catch up and some of the NASCAR guys ganged up on him a little bit and pushed him back to fourth place I think it was at the finish but still a great run by Jimmy Vassar and he, Alex Zanardi uh, and Alan Sir Jr. Uh, will be back off down there this afternoon well, uh, we shall see. Let's hope they're not running too late now after uh, this qualifying having been delayed a bit with red flags. Riding on board with him now, a bit of an opportunity to look at the track. He's on the back straightaway at the moment. And then this comes into a left right, which leads around eventually into another right onto the start-finish straight. 
So a little tricky section, and then back on the power hard as he comes now on to start finish straight, and down across the line to complete another lap. We're seeing some much quicker times now across the line uh, for Michael Andretti. He's not done a particularly quick time, but uh, Vassar's time is 60 point. 761 on that last lap about seven tenths off his best and that's what we're seeing at the moment most people are about a half a second off their best from a friday qualifying things could get better in the closing minutes second qualifying session and scott pruitt on circuit at the moment the man who's fastest so far in the qualifying sessions from Friday with that 59.5, but we're gradually seeing people going faster and faster. Michael Andretti has just done a 60.2. That's only three tenths of a second slower than his best from Friday. So they are going faster, and you can see the sunshine glinting off Scott Pruitt's car. His pole position could be coming under challenge. Jeremy, he lost pole position in Detroit, didn't he? He was fastest on the Friday. It would be so disappointing if suddenly someone displaces him here again here. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, the, the four the weather forecast in Detroit for the second day was rain, so he went out on Friday determined to try and get the pole, which he did on the provisional pole. The rain, however, on Saturday never materialized. Well, here it did, but it's now gone away again. The track is drying out. Michael Andretti, just a couple of seconds ago, came across here 1 minute 0.226, as you say, and that would have put him sixth on the grid yesterday. So there's definitely room for improvement here for some of those people who were a little farther down the field yesterday than they thought they should be. Scott Perot was talking yesterday in the pole position or provisional pole press conference and saying just how important this weekend is to him and the team. He's dropped down to sixth place in the championship now on 61 points. He's had a couple of non-finishes, including that last race in Detroit, where they had a, an engine failure, which, as he was saying, has been fairly rare this year. The Ford Cosworth motor has been absolutely superb, right on a par with Honda and with Mercedes. And the start of the year looked really good for him. He was fifth in Homestead, one at Surfers Paradise, third in Long Beach, third in Rio as well. But the last few races, things haven't been coming together for him so well. He needs a good result this weekend. We switch, though, to the man who's been having several good results in a row, and that is Greg Moore outside of row five at the moment but I think he's one of the ones we really could potentially see an improvement from excursion was to make a minor wing adjustment up front everything else was in good shape well we could just hear there they just made a little bit of a wing change on that car and that's how he's going to hope to improve on his time so far yeah and he's yeah, he's certainly capable of doing it. He's, he's been phenomenal qualifier for the last couple of years with Scott Pruitt. And um, he, I think, can go faster this afternoon. And, oh, there's Greg Moore. I mean, he's every inch of the track on the exit of that corner there, doesn't he? Let's just see what his time is here, Jeremy. As he comes across the line, a 60, no, uh, Dario's done a 60.3. That's a good time from Dario Franchitti. He's already second fastest, remember. 60.5 from Greg Moore. He's still two tenths of a second away from his best of yesterday. And still this green track, this cleaned track from the rain this morning is not producing the same sort of times as we saw in Friday's session, but what we may begin to see at the end of this session, the guys will go out on a second set of new tyres and that's when we may just see one or two improvements. They've, they've really got to do the work now, put a bit of rubber down themselves and then maybe at the end they'll see some improvements. Yeah, so this sun on the track it'll get some more temperature into the track to again we'll get more temperature into the tyres that's a crucial thing for these guys this afternoon. Uh, we need rubber down on the track to just uh, it just adds grip to the tyres as they you know as they as more cars go around you get more grip on the track and this the sun that's out now will certainly help I think later on in the session if the sun goes in once we've got some rubber down onto the track that will help them some more conversely but that's how that's how close it is you know everything here is measured in fractions of a second as Dario Frankitti comes into the pits. Yeah Frankitti already second fastest remember after that uh, good effort yesterday. Let me just tell you about Alex Zanardi though we haven't uh, seen him yet but he's only 11th fastest after the Friday qualifying had a dreadful day he was the pole position consider here last year and the race winner after a fairly dominant performance in tricky conditions but Zanardi uh, who's just gone round reasonable times but hasn't improved on his time as yet he really needs to do some work to move up from 11th you're riding with Gilles de Ferran who's so far third fastest that's after the Friday session 
And Gilda Ferran, who grabbed that pole position from Scott Pruitt, in fact, in Detroit on the second day. Well, I wonder if he can do similar here today. So far, he's just done a 60.075, the fastest time. But no, because Scott Pruitt's just done a 59.8, the fastest time of today. And Scott Pruitt just three tenths of a second off his best from yesterday. It still looks as though the track is a little bit down on time from the Friday qualifying. But I'm sure we're going to see one or two improvements before this session is over. And Gilles de Ferrer now looks as though he's on a charging lap. Through this sequence of corners down at the bottom end of the track, where a lot of time can be gained or lost through this section. Now he's out of there, accelerating hard up through the gears and up into sixth gear as he comes along this curving straight, which is taken absolutely flat out. The track at 1.9 miles certainly provides plenty of challenges, mainly right-hand corners. In fact, Scott Pruitt was saying yesterday they tend to set the car up somewhat asymmetrically to, to set the car mainly for right-hand bends, although there's a couple of key left-handers as well. Cross the line then for Gilles de Ferran. Let's just see what time he's done. A 59.743. That's an improvement on his yesterday's time. That puts him second fastest. So de Ferran is the first, really, to improve. Last lap effort, a good performance from him, 59.743. But what can Michael Andretti do? Qualified fourth yesterday, had a problem, as we heard earlier, when he had a punctured tyre on one of his new sets of tyres that he felt cost him some performance. And now he's got an opportunity to move up from fourth to perhaps try and get onto the front row. His time yesterday, 59.952. That's what he's got to improve on. There you can see the positions as they are now, and uh, Jeremy Franchitti having been pushed down to third place, so he'll be anxious to get back onto the front row himself. Yeah, he is. He's back in the pits right now, just making a couple of quick changes. We can just see him looking to, to our left out of the booth here. A couple of minor changes to the Hogan racing car. We're on board with Michael Andretti coming into turn nine. This is the final corner. Gets onto the pad. You can see the car wiggling under acceleration, shifting up through the gears, up into sixth gear now as he takes goes across the start finish line 1 minute 0.314 slightly quicker than his last lap but not not an improvement yet for Michael Andretti still about four tenths away from what he did yesterday Ben yes so Andretti not able to improve as yet uh, we saw him being interviewed with Christian Fittipaldi earlier Fittipaldi back out in the Budweiser car and uh, well Fittipaldi's just done a 60.9 that's uh, compared to his 60.3 from yesterday so so far the two swift chassis are not making any gains on what we saw in yesterday's session. Let me tell you that uh, there, as you see, Dario Franchitti, a little bit of work going on in his car. He's got another set of tyres to use as well, remember. And he's dropped back down to third position now, being pushed down there by De Ferran. So he wants to come back out, see if he can get on the front row. Meanwhile, Scott Pruitt, as you can see, is on circuit, trying to defend that pole position that he owns at the moment. Fastest yesterday morning, as well as in the qualifying session. So Scott Pruitt really looks in good form. And indeed, they did a bit of testing here earlier in the year, didn't they? Yeah, they came in here right after Long Beach, I think it was. They, they, they were dodging then showers, just as they had been doing today, funnily enough. Didn't get as much done as they really wanted to, I think. It certainly made some progress and were able to dial in the car to the circuit here. There is Gilles de Ferrer, fastest so far today, 59.743. Back, he's been into the pits, there he's out again, then on another set of tickets. To go for his second set of tyres, still with some eight minutes of the session to go. Now I don't know whether he thinks it's going to rain again. It's we we can't tell. There's a lot of cloud around in the sky. You can see that for yourself. That's a pretty smart move. You know, these last couple of minutes are going to be pretty busy. He wants to try and get in there, get in a banker lap, as they call it over here. Uh, and uh, he he thinks the track conditions are about as good as they're going to be. Derek Walker in picture there as well, the Scottish team owner of uh, Gilles de Ferran's car who's uh, seen a, a varied performance this year for the team, bit up and down, great qualifying performances. They haven't quite had the success in the races that they perhaps deserve. Uh, Gilles de Ferran goes across the line then. Remember, on a brand new set of tyres, you can even see the, the stripes and the stickers still on the right-hand side tyres. Those tyres don't get worked very hard around this circuit because of the lack of really serious left-handers. It means you'll probably get two flying laps out of this set of tyres to try and uh, further improve and try and take pole away again from Scott Pruitt, just as he did in Detroit. Yeah, talking about the tyres there, the, the fast zone tyres zone is a left-hand tyre on the left-hand side of the car. It's actually the same both for the primary compound and the option uh, tyres. It's just the right-hand side tyre for the fast stones is softer for their, uh, their option, uh, option choice, let's say. Um, but the, the left-hand side tyres are both the same for both different types 
lots of cars without here this weekend. Riding on board, that Honda engine really working hard as he comes down and towards the end of the straight, down through the gears. And that lap didn't look as though it's going to be uh, any major shakes, but uh, he may well really get on it as he comes out onto start-finish train this time. Yeah, it's the next one around. I think this is his, this is his first flying lap, actually, as he comes across the line there. And uh, we'll see what the time is. It was a 1 minute 05, 069, but that was his first lap out of pits. Of course, he had to go past a slower car there with Paul Tracy just coming out of the pits. So if you held up on that lap, he'll uh, try and make his way around now, and in the next lap he'll hope to be able to get some clear traffic. But you know, his, his raison d'etre for going out there with eight minutes to go on that last uh, sticker tires was to try and get a clean lap in. And it looks like he's going to be struggling to do that. Yes, I think they're all going to be struggling to get a clean lap in now. As we said, two-mile track, so you don't get a lot of space around here. And if you catch traffic in just the wrong places, the track is narrow through these twisty sections that Gilles de Ferran is on now. The start-finish trade is quite wide and uh, lends itself to overtaking in the race but the other sections are quite twisty, and he's coming down to another fairly tricky part now. De Ferran, though, is already second fastest behind Scott Pruitt. Dario Franchitti back into the pits after having done a very quick lap again, a 60.6 he did. And it may have been on a, an old set of tyres. It may have been on the set of tyres that he'd already run. They may have made a couple of changes to the car. Although, uh, we're just looking into the pit lane from our commentary box. Did they change? They didn't look like they changed all four there, Jeremy. It looked like they may have just changed two tyres when he came in. Well, it should have just changed the rears, didn't it? Um, so that's, that's the interesting strategy there by Dario Franchitti. They're going on some used tyres. We've just seen a 60.2 from Raul Bazel, which is an improvement for him because he did a 60.4 yesterday. So that moves Raul Bazel now up into eighth position. We've got Scott Pruitt fastest, Gilles de Ferran second, Franchitti third, Andretti fourth. And de Ferran's just done another good time, a 59.685. There you see him. And uh, just before we saw him building up the uh, heat in the tyres, and that now is working. He's done several laps to build up that, that heat in the tyres, but it's worked because it's put him still second fastest, but uh, only by less than a tenth of a second from Scott Pruitt. And I wonder whether De Ferran can now get another rapid lap out of this set of tyres. Jimmy Vassar's just done a 60.3 as well, but that's a, a little way off, three tenths of a second slower than yesterday's time. So Gilles De Ferran, interesting to see uh, how he's gradually, gradually built up these tyres to operating temperature on this track which has been washed clean and the Brazilian now really still working hard in the Valvoline car trying to improve further if he can finished in third place in Detroit remember that was a good performance had a third place in Gateway as well but can he now go even quicker meanwhile Zanardi's just done a good time across Yilda Ferran has just put in a 59.4 he's fastest Derek Walker is delighted this is what happened in Detroit Yilda Ferran grabbed pole from Scott Brewer in the closing moments We've just got two and a quarter minutes to go in this qualifying session. Tremendous performance from Gilles de Ferran. Yeah, he'll be this lap won't be so good. There he is behind one of the target cars there. He won't be able to improve. But Mark Blundell puts in a 1 minute point four six one. So certainly an improvement there for Mark Blundell. Puts him up to 12th position. But uh, Gilles de Ferran, there he is. What a magnificent effort by the Brazilian driver. And Scott Pruitt, where we are watching Scott Pruitt, he's coming up now to the last corner. We'll see what he can do next time around. Yes, uh, let me just tell you that uh, Alex Zanardi's improved slightly. He's gone to 10th position with an improvement in time, but it's not as an much an improvement as he would like. Greg Moore has improved. He's up to 7th place. Scott Pruitt's just gone fastest. 59.383. Pruitt takes provisional pole. And what a battle. Pat Patrick down there in the pit. What a tremendous battle we're witnessing between the two teams, the Brahma Sports team and Scott Pruitt and the Walker Racing team with Gilles de Ferran. And Christian Fittipaldi has come up to 3rd place. Fitty Baldi driving with a broken leg, his first race back in the Swift chassis. You're on board with his teammate Michael Andretti, but Fitty Baldi's just gone third fastest. That is just an incredible performance. Dario Franchitti's been pushed back to fourth. Michael Andretti is now in fifth place. Jimmy Vassa is sixth. But this final moment, we're into the last minute now, and can Michael Andretti now further improve on his time? He's standing fifth at the moment. He comes out of the final corner, gets onto the front straightaway. Greg Moore is ahead of him. But Greg Moore is not a factor on this lap for Michael Andretti.